In this video we're going to learn how to use the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. So here we have a quadratic equation that we're asked to solve and it says to give your answers to two decimal places. When a question is written in this way it strongly suggests that we'll need to use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula is given by x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now this is a formula that you'll need to memorise for your exams, it won't be given to you. But what do a, b and c actually mean? Well, when we write a quadratic equation out we tend to write it in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. What that means is the number in front of the x squared would be a, so in this one a would be 2. The number in front of the x would be b, so in this case b would be 5. And the final term at the end, the constant, would be c, so in this case c would be 1. Let's have a look at how we can solve this question then. We're going to write the quadratic formula on the left side of the screen, along with the steps that we're going to go through. The first step is to write it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Fortunately, our quadratic is already in this form. All this means is all of the terms need to be on the left, and the right just needs to be 0. The next step is to find the values of a, b and c. So a was the coefficient of x squared, so that's 2. B was the coefficient of x, so that's 5, and C was the constant term at the end, so that's 1. Step 3 is to substitute these into the formula. So we're going to write out the formula again, but everywhere there's an A we'll write 2, everywhere there's a B we'll write 5, and everywhere there's a C we'll write 1. So x equals negative B, which is negative 5, plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 5 squared, minus 4 times A, which is times 2, and times c, which is times 1. And all of this divided by 2a, and since a is 2, it's 2 times 2. The next step is to simplify. We're going to tidy up a little bit. We're going to keep x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root, but we're going to simplify what's inside the square root. So if you do 5 squared, you get 25, and then negative 4 times 2 times 1 is negative 8, and 25 take 8 is 17. You'll often have this question on a calculator paper though, so you could probably just type that into your calculator. And on the bottom we have 2 times 2, which is 4. The final step of the question is to write your solutions. Now there are two solutions at this point. We have x equals negative 5 plus root 17 over 4, and x equals negative 5 subtract root 17 over 4. Notice the difference between these is the positive here, and the negative here. I would then just type both of these into my calculator to get an answer. Remember the question said round to two decimal places, so if you type the first one in, you'll get x equals negative 0.22, and the second one would give you x equals negative 2.28. This next question's a little more difficult. The first step is to write it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Last time it was already in this form, but this time it's not. You can tell because the right hand side is not equal to 0. Instead we have 10 minus 2x squared. To get this to 0, we're going to add 2x squared, and we're going to take away 10, to remove those terms. That would mean the right hand side is equal to 0, and we should do the same to the left hand side, so add 2x squared and take away 10. On the left side we've already got 1x squared, and we're adding 2x squared, so there's now 3x squared. The minus 5x can stay as it is, because we're not adding or taking away any x's, and then we've got 7, and we're going to take away 10. 7 take away 10 is negative 3. So now this is in the correct form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Step 2, find the values of a, b and c. We can see a is 3, b this time is negative, negative 5, and c is also negative, negative 3. Step 3, substitute into the formula. So we're going to write the formula out again, but instead of a, we'll write 3, instead of b, negative 5, instead of c, negative 3. The formula begins with x equals negative b, but b is already a negative, it's negative 5. So if we want negative b, this actually switches back to a positive. So x equals 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now any time you write a negative number, I'd suggest you write it in brackets. So instead of just 5 squared, negative 5 in a bracket squared. Minus 4 times a, and a is 3, 
and then times c, which is negative 3. And again, you can see I've used the bracket for that negative number. All divided by 2a, and a is 3, so it's 2 times 3. We'll then go to step 4, which is to simplify. So x equals, we'll keep the 5 and the plus or minus, and then we have the square root. Again, at this point, you might just want to type what's inside the square root into your calculator. So negative 5 in a bracket squared, minus 4, times 3, times negative 3. And that will give you 61. All over 2 times 3, and 2 times 3 is 6. We can now separate this into our two solutions. So we have, first of all, x equals 5 plus square root 61 over 6. And then we have x equals 5 minus square root 61 over 6. The difference here is the first one has a plus, and the second one has a minus. If you type both of these into your calculator to get them as decimals, remember the question asked us for three significant figures this time. So the first one would be x equals 2.14, and the second one would be x equals negative 0.468. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out what I think you should watch next, and also subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads.